Okay, so this is the crux of the matter. If the U.S. is being used by the secret society of Luciferians, which I mentioned, which are uh, known for their satanic child sacrifices and genocides of people groups, and on and on, causing wars and so forth, famines, destruction and mayhem, then how can a Christian church become a creation of the state of a, a, by a nation that is a part of this, or that's being used by this? How, uh, to, uh, NTCC and many other churches, ton, ton, tons of churches are incorporated now. It's just the way to go. Everybody wants to be incorporated because uh, you can get, uh, people can donate to you and then uh, they can write it off as a tax deduction. They can, uh, and also the founder of the church, whoever it may be, if he gets incorporated, if he incorporates his church, the church becomes a creature of the state. It becomes a person legally that can be sued and can sue. And uh, therefore, it is, it's a creation of the state. It's no longer the body of Christ, but a creation of the state. Um, now, I told you what I believe about 9-11. It was an inside job. It wasn't simply the Muslims getting lucky, but uh, it was done in order to create a problem so that martial law could be instituted and Americans would lose their rights because we feel the need uh, to be protected. Now, this is how... Rome changed from a republic to a dictatorship, and it lasted for centuries, all the way up until 476 AD, from before the time of Christ uh, until 476, so about 500 years or so. It remained as a dictatorship. This is what Americans have to wake up to. See, Rome, same situation. Uh, you can you can liken Rome to the United States, and you can liken the barbarians to the Muslims. Okay, Rome was a republic. They had people that represented them in in their government. Uh, not just one person, but they had you know democratically elected officials that met together and and decided things. Uh, they switched to a dictatorship because they were at war. And it didn't ever change. People want to think, oh yeah, we'll give up our rights during this time so we can be protected. And once the war is over, we'll get our freedoms back and our rights to privacy and all these things. Uh, that's not the, I don't think that's the plan. I think they're doing this on purpose. They can control and get control over us. You see, uh, uh, it's just history repeating itself. Okay, so Obama passed Obamacare. After, after Bush passed the martial law uh, laws to, to institute where we would, uh, if in the case of emergency, he, uh, the president could take over and basically do whatever he wants. Uh, Obama passed Obamacare later on, and he could do the research. He could find there's, uh, they want to plant a microchip in us. It's in the Obamacare. Okay, it's hidden. It's in the back of the Reconciliation Act. Uh, Obamacare uh, 2300 had this stuff that people were saying was sound like he wanted to put microchips in us, these RFID chips, not microchips, but RFID chips in our in our in us for a registry, and uh, and that uh, was uh, it, it didn't pass. But then he passed another healthcare plan, which uh, argue, uh, admittedly did not contain any any the same wording. It did not mention those things that the first. Uh, 2300 bill had about the that which people believed were related to the RFID chip, but later the Reconciliation Act did. Okay, and that did pe get passed, and you can do the research. You can try to find it. It's very hard to find that Reconciliation Act, the copy that has the very similar wording that was in the 2300 uh, bill that didn't get passed. That's been linked and traced, and people have done the research and shown that it's talking about an RFID chip. It's pretty. It's pretty clear. I'm pretty sure it is, and others are too. There, there's a, there's one copy that has the full Reconciliation Act on a government website. I forgot what it was. I looked it up though, and I found it, uh, and I read it, and it it's got the wording. And and what you do is you 
that we, it says there's a class two device that they're going to uh, implement. They're going to have us take. Uh, and then uh, if you look up what a class two device is in the Food and Drug Administration's website, it's a RFID chip. Plain and simple. The one that they're mentioning on there, it, it says it right there. It's an RFID chip, a radio frequency uh, ID. Uh, or, and uh, th th this is what the, the, the crazy thing is. This guy, Nick Russo, he ended up dead too. He, uh, they, uh, you know, they say, well, I think he got cancer, but some people, this is what another lady saying that uh, cancer can be um, injected into someone. But he, this guy, Nick Russo, he was uh, talking about, um, he, 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 got, he met Nick Rockefeller and he talked to him. And Nick Rockefeller says the whole plan is to get everybody with a chip. Okay, so um, fuel shortage. This is what I think is going to happen. It's going to be a fuel shortage, then a food shortage. Then they're going to take away people's weapons. People aren't going to be able to do anything if it requires fuel. Not going to be able to drive, not going to be able to fly unless you're in the military or the government. There's going to be mass killings of Protestants, Protestant Christians, anyone who won't convert to Catholicism, because this is what the Catholic Church has wanted to do all along. Uh, martial law, uh, and uh, no, no, as far as martial law, now I'm getting back to NTCC. Okay, so they, they want to institute this martial law. They want to create problems, and they want to create disturbances, and they want to for us to be afraid so that we'll be happy to embrace martial law, okay? Martial law is supposed to be, you know, the, the, the next step to you know, ensure that we're safe, you know, and, and they can start taking people, anyone they think, they have a hunch that you're, a you're maybe a conspiracy theorist or anybody who, who knows something and is, t and is sharing, they can just take you and lock you up. And they're going to say this because they think you're a terrorist or that you're part of the terrorist network or something. And uh, But I think it's going to be the people that are blowing the whistle on the Freemasons, Illuminati, and everything else I've been telling you. Uh, they're going to start, uh, they, they, they have the right now to, uh, uh, Obama passed this, where he can detain people indefinitely who have committed no crimes, but they, can, they think are going to commit a crime. There was even a movie with Tom Cruise, they said, where they, Tom Cruise arrests somebody for doing a crime that they say he was about to commit. And a lot of times the movies are showing you actually what's going to happen. They're conditioning you to get to be able to accept what's going to happen. And now I'm getting to NTCC, martial law in the incorporated churches. An incorporated church, they say, becomes a channel for the government's propaganda because an incorporated church, uh, they just start telling them, we want you to start telling people this and that, and the, and the, and the churches do it because they're getting tax free, or, or they're, 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 they have the right and the protection from that 501c3 status. The government protects them from, uh, they make them immune to any kind of, uh, uh, you know, they don't have to have any, uh, um, they, uh, they don't have to pay taxes. You, you can collect all this money, and they don't have to pay taxes on it. Not, not unlike a business where you got to legitimately work so hard because you got to pay your fair share to the government and you got to keep working and working and working and expanding and doing all these things and you're under a lot of pressure uh, to be able to do things because you got to pay taxes on a lot of the money that you take in so it very seriously affects your profit I know because I have a small business these people if I didn't have to pay taxes oh man I'd have so much I, I, I oh man it'd be so easy to do business uh, I could charge people less and get more work. And I, I mean, it, it's it's really hard. You got to charge a lot of money sometimes just to be able because you know that at the end of the year you have to pay taxes thirty three percent. Yeah, you get different things. They, you know, it makes it a little less than thirty three percent, but still, you know that the government's going to take a huge bite. These churches love that but they don't have to pay taxes. They can collect all this money, and so it's a temptation. The government gives you that gift, and then you take it. But there's, you think there's no hook, or you think there's no nail, you know that the, 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 you know they, you, you think that there's nothing, there's no obligation for that, there's no exchange, it's just a free gift. It's not free. The devil, the devil definitely has his his wage. He he want he he's he's gonna he's gonna get paid. You know he's not gonna give you something for free. 
And I don't think the U.S. is a good Christian nation. It's a, it's 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 controlled by these paganists, these uh these Satanists. Okay, uh, I was in Mel Singh's church. Okay, I I, I just recently I, I went to visit his church, just to see. You know, I just wanted to catch up, see what's going on in their church, and it was it was like perfect timing. I went into the service. He was preaching. He only has a half an hour to preach to these people. And he begins to talk about uh, these kids making this lady feel bad. You know, they're calling her names on the bus and doing all this mean stuff to her. And uh, then he said, you better get your kids under control. You, you better make sure your kids, you, you, you know, you, you got them under control. He's talking to mostly single GIs in a serviceman's work. And he's talking about how you better make sure your kids are, you know, you, you, you watch your kids and make sure they don't do something bad. And he says, because the martial law is going to get them. And then he repeated it. He said, the martial law is going to get them. He said it twice. You know, he, he's only got 30 minutes to talk about Jesus and talk about God. But he made time to make sure that he made it very clear that the martial law is coming. You know, he wanted to make sure that, that we know martial law is coming soon. In a Christian church service, what's the point? Why did he have to make it, you know, the point was to, to do good unto others. But he had to make it real clear that, that martial law is coming soon, you know, and and and, and so uh, the, what I believe, and, and this is what somebody said after I heard that message. I thought that was really odd, and I brought it up to him. I said, "You know what's going on? You mentioned it, even martial law. You're not warning people about that. You're not telling them something's wrong with that. The the mar martial law, you know, our government is not supposed to be. Uh, we're, we're supposed to have a standing military, but not to be imposed on the people." in any circumstances. But now they're going to impose martial law on us as if we're the enemies of our own nation. You know, that's the, that's the great conspiracy. You call me a conspiracy nut. And, but here's the government's calling us that we're conspiring against them. See how it's getting flipped around? And you're calling me the nut because I'm blaming that, that I'm suspicious of the government you know, you that may be watching right now, you may be thinking, because I've talked to people before, but honestly, a lot of people I talk to, they don't think I'm a nut when I tell them about this stuff. Most of the people I talk to, a lot of them know about this already, or at least around here where I'm at. I talk to people about it all the time, and they know they've heard it, they've talked about it, they say I'm right on it, I know what I'm talking about, uh, and, and and I'm just thinking about it right now. If that's in your mind, you call it, you're thinking, oh, you're conspiracy nut because of the stuff you've seen on TV, you're watching the media, uh, you're just watching the mainstream news, and you think, oh, conspiracy nuts. Think about it. They're going to be instituting martial law because they think their own citizens are conspiring against them. What's the difference if I think, hey, you're the conspirators conspiring against us? You know? So, um, uh, anyways, I, I after I went to his service, I was uh, reading something. I was, uh, I think I was, I think I was reading it, uh, and I, I think I was reading an article where the guy was saying that somebody went to their pastor and was concerned because they had heard that the government was telling the five hundred one c three churches that had be, had had become incorporated that uh, okay that the. He was concerned that the government was telling these 501c3 pastors um, to start conditioning the people through the messages and the sermons to be prepared for martial law so they wouldn't revolt and rebel against it when it happened. So it'd start indoctrinating them, start getting it out in the messages, start getting people prepared for that. So, you see, I didn't think it was a coincidence that he was talking about that. I, I really feel that, that that's actually what's going on. I thought that was confirmation. I said, wow, that's two instances uh, where, where I'm hearing about this. Uh, churches, some, you know, some, some evidence that churches are being told, those that have been incorporated are being told by the government that they need to start conditioning people to get ready for this. Um, so they will just accept it. Um, and that's it. No taxes. See, uh, Where's the NTCC in all of this? I, I don't know. I just I remember someone telling me Olson was selected because he worked in the Air Force uh, as some kind of intelligence. You know, he he worked in the intelligence section. He had a, 
intelligence a specialty. And so Davis promoted him because he would be able to keep his mouth shut, you know, or he would know how to do things without giving away information or he could, you know, it, it just seems weird. It seems odd that you would promote someone because they were in intelligence. Uh, and it reminds me of um, that man, uh, Alberto Rivera, the one who, the man who said that he, he wrote a, a lot of books a few books about uh, his experience as a Jesuit. He he blew the whistle on him. He he made it public, and uh, yeah, he ended up getting killed. I'm pretty sure. And uh, he um, he was telling the what, what what he experienced as a Jesuit, and he said that he was invited into a secret meeting because uh, he they because he had been involved in espionage and because of his position in espionage. Uh, as a spy, uh, they they were they were willing to use him in a higher secret level, you know, within the organization of the Jesuits, and so or the Catholics. So it's it's very, very very suspicious when I hear something like that. When I think back on it, actually, that I heard that that Olson was picked like that uh, to be promoted because of his experience in intelligence gathering. You know, being in that high top security level, knowing the importance of secrecy and all the, all these things, that doesn't belong in the Christian church. Something's wrong with that. That reminds me of the occult, and I'm not talking about you just your average strange occult. I'm talking about the very demonic, wicked cult that's that is the Freemasons. And uh, so I, I don't know what's going on in NTCC. If you want to leave a comment. I'd love to chat with you. What do you think about what I just said as far as the NTCC being connected to this grand conspiracy of Freemasonry? God bless you.